So actually, the, the uh, art of music is uh, the art of speaking with this spontaneous quality. Uh, yeah, D flat. G, D. D flat. D flat. E flat. E flat what? D flat what? D flat seven. D flat seven. What's up, Winnicunit? Nothing been much, Matt. What about you? Adela, I was addressing the school, not just you. Ah, oh, dang it. I thought I may have caught your attention for once. No, sorry. Not gonna happen today. But you know what did get my attention last night? What would that be, Mateo? The moon. Twas spectacular. Hey man, the moon isn't real. Are you serious? Nah, it's just a conspiracy theory. But me and Hayden did a story all about them. Let's take a look. Hi there, Hayden. Crazy to see you here on the moon. Yes, Adel. What a strange coincidence seeing you here on the moon. You know, some people don't even think the moon is real. That's a crazy conspiracy theory. But I bet kids at when I kind of know even more. A conspiracy theory is an explanation of an event or situation that invokes a conspiracy without warrant. According to Viren Swamy, a professor of social psychology at Angola Ruskin University in Cambridge in the United Kingdom, human beings have a very natural tendency to take in information that fits their own perspective of the world. And we do that for a very simple reason. We don't like it when we feel wrong. We don't like it when people tell us we're wrong because that damages our psychological well-being. After doing our own research, we decided to branch out and talk to Mr. Fleming, a psychology teacher. There is a thought that our minds uh, do complicate things more than they probably should, that almost like a form of mental exercise. But at the same time, certainly in the notion of conspiracy theories existing in like, U.S. history or in modern times, uh, it goes from what might be seen as reasonable, but then it seems to leap off into things such as whether the moon landing was faked or, or whatever other conspiracy things are out there. We decided to come up with two conspiracy theories to talk to students about to see what they believe. Our first conspiracy theory was, is Ted Cruz the Zodiac Killer? We started off by talking to an expert on this field. The Zodiac Killer was a serial murderer claiming to have murdered around 40 people, 37 to be exact. Now the police could only ever confirm a few of these deaths, but in either case, this man is still at large. Do you believe that Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer? Yeah. Wow. But what the Ted Cruz theory says is that he may in fact be the man we've been looking for. Oh, he's totally the Zodiac Killer, dude. I just think that Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer. Oh, there's like no doubt in my mind. Uh, and it seems to be that the internet has sent this conspiracy phenomenon even more uh, to another level. Our second conspiracy theory was, is the moon real? We talked to an expert in this field, then we talked to students about what they think. It's not until the early 19th century that we actually first start to see or hear mentions of the moon. Medieval paintings seem to completely forget about this important object. The moon may not even be there. Excuse me, do you believe in the moon? The moon? No, it's fake. Another theory is that aliens actually implemented a moon to keep us looking at a thing that's right in front of us instead of the whole big picture. Sort of like bugs attracted to a fluorescent light. Wesley, do you believe in the moon? Um, no. Okay, so the moon is actually a hologram. You can see it when it's a waning crescent. Uh, it might come down to where we're at with fake news or whether we understand reality as such. Whatever it is, we're in an interesting phase. Wow, those are some cool conspiracy theories. I didn't know that's how they worked. Yeah, but just remember to be careful. Not everything you read on the internet is true. Have a good one, man, and kind of stay safe. Wow, that definitely gave me a new perspective on conspiracies. So, what about Tupac? Uh, I think he's probably still alive, but he could have died from a drug overdose by now. People should definitely be careful when it comes to chemicals. Recently, senior Beck and Langton won the contest to design this year's Chem Free t-shirt. 25 artists submitted designs, but Langton's rose to the top. She will receive a $100 prize and have the honor of seeing her design on the t-shirts worn by seniors during the fun-filled night of Chem Free. 
Graduation will take place on June 9th and seniors will head off directly after the ceremony to the chem free events. Seniors, be sure to get your tickets in by May 10th. There's only, they're only 20 bucks, a pretty awesome deal. There will be a table in the dining hall on Monday accepting registrations. Mateo, Camp Free looks like it's going to be absolutely lit. Yeah, and the ticket price is so low because the senior class has been doing fundraisers. Yeah, you're right. And actually the current ninth graders are starting to build on their back too. There will be a car show next Saturday and this is the third one that's going to be held by Winnicunit, but with a new twist. This time there's going to be a student section. Want to show off your ride? See Ms. Turcotte or Ms. Grant if you want in. You know the trap van's going to be making an interference. Your family minivan? I don't think that's such a good idea. Matt, both of our vans have been through a lot. You could almost say they're warriors. Speaking of warriors, we have an entire block dedicated to them. Max and Joey actually did a story on these warriors roaming our school. I don't know if that's exactly what the story's about, but let's take a look anyways. What's up, Luna Connet? Joey and Max here bringing you a story on something that's near and dear to my heart, Warrior Block. Warrior Block came into everybody's schedule around the 2014-2015 time period, which was about my sophomore year. Warrior Block's original purpose was for students to read quietly and for teachers to give the daily announcements. In some classrooms eventually, Warrior Block evolved to somewhere where students can consult with their teachers, catch up on homework, or just relax and do whatever they want. Classroom policies as of today vary throughout the school, and I'm wondering why. Are there some teachers of certain subjects that are more harsh with their policies? Are there still teachers who force their students to sit down quietly and read during Warrior Block? Does it depend on what grade the class is in? And what's the future of Warrior Block? I decided to leave the comfort of my home Warrior Block with Mr. Yaten to find these answers myself. By first, sending out a survey. The purpose of the survey was to find out if students of all grades even like Warrior Block, what they do during it, and what changes they would make to it if they could. I then set out to other Warrior Blocks myself to get the real experience. My name is Joe Joyner, I'm a senior. Well, we followed the rules for the first couple of weeks and then it kind of went downhill. We kind of started going on our phones or doing classwork and never really read as much as we started off doing. Almost everyone in my class has a block off six, so they just leave or they, um, they just don't come here. They skip it. And there's usually only three people here. Well, I like it because, uh, well, this year it's been really downtime for me, so I do my homework or I just chill. But uh, a lot of people don't come to our warrior block because we're seniors, so they just sign themselves out and leave. And we're not 18 yet, so we stay here. This year, I think it's better than all the past years because it's a little bit more laid back. Um, the past years were more strict, but this year I really get my homework done. And I have a block six, which kind of stinks, so I can't leave. But yeah, it's a good time to just relax before my block six. OK, so in our warrior block, um, attendance is mandatory. Um, we usually sit around and chat about our lives, about our weekends, about our days. It really is a bonding time, I believe. And um, I think this year is a lot more relaxed. And it gives us a little bit more time to get to know one another, I think. The purpose of Warrior Block, in my own opinion, is to build relationships with other students in your grade level, with teachers, maybe um, have the time to go to another class and work on your academics if you need to do a test. And I do hope that they keep it like this, with the time to breathe, time to drink tea, time to relax, time to build relationships, because I think that that's what high school should be like. Awesome. So it turns out, based on the survey, of the 92 students who answered, most students spend their time on their phone, talking to other classmates, and completing classwork or homework. 70.7% .7 of people described their teacher's policy as lenient, 5.4% described it as strict, and 23.9% described their teacher's policy as neither. I'm happy to see most students said that they enjoy Warrior Block like I do, and hopefully it stays a relaxing and bonding environment for everyone in future years. For WHTV, this is Joey and Max. Next year, Warrior Block will remain the same as it is, but the plan is to allow students to be able to sign themselves out to go see other teachers for extra help or makeup work. Currently, only teachers are allowed to do that, but the attendance system will be updated over the summer to give students that ability. 
I guess Warrior Block is pretty cool. Yeah, it's unique to our school. Well, because of Winnicunit's staff and students and classes, our school is awarded the Eddie's Award. Winnicunit was honored this week with the title of School of Excellence by a selection committee composed of experienced New Hampshire educators and community leaders. The school will receive a plaque and a recognition from the governor at a ceremony on June 10, 2017. Also, each statewide representative of excellence receives an Eddie's Bell, a banner, a frame certificate, and a cash award of $2,000 from McDonald's restaurants. Principal McGowan says that the award is recognition for all the great things happening here at Winnicott. What a fantabulous award to win, capping off your final year at this excellent establishment. True. This year has flown by. Speaking of which, how's your senioritis been, Matt? It's pretty hard to find motivation to do work, come to class, and generally do most things, but definitely all seniors are facing a touch of this. Well, that's certainly concerning, but Max has a story on it. Let's roll it. Third try is an exciting time at Winnicunit. The weather is getting nicer, days are getting longer, and summer is right around the corner. Most seniors are wrapping up their plans for next year and are excited to take the next step. But during this last stretch of high school, many seniors may find themselves facing an unexpected challenge. <laughs> Senioritis. Senioritis is defined as an affliction for students in their final year of high school, characterized by a decline in motivation and performance. Symptoms include an increase in tardiness, absences, and lower grades. In order to learn more about this dangerous condition and its repercussions, we talked to Mr. Abood. I think senioritis is, is kind of a made-up disease that basically involves uh, upperclassmen thinking uh, that they should you know, not have to do work and not go to class and, and kind of just live by their own rules. If you're constantly cutting classes, you can expect uh, detentions, in-school suspensions, uh, or in extreme cases, maybe out-of-school suspensions. You know, uh, seniors are 17, 18 years old, so we try to talk to them as adults in terms of uh, their grades, uh, their graduation, credits, things like that that, that make sense to them. Uh, obviously, not going to class is a, is a pretty quick and easy way to, to fail a class, so uh, we try to encourage kids to go to class. Unfortunately, senioritis is closer to home than you may think. We talked to some seniors here at Wanakana who have already started to feel its effects and asked how they plan to make it through the end of the year. My name is Dylan Taylor, and I have senioritis. I've been dealing with senioritis since first trimester. I don't really have much motivation. The grades are slipping a little bit. I did not make honor roll these past two tries. I did. Um, good for you. Grades dropped from probably a 3.5 to a 2.5. I'll probably miss a couple classes, go down to the beach every once in a while, probably end up sleeping a lot, gaming. I'm Evolin and I have senioritis. This has just definitely affected my motivation. I um, have a lot of trouble showing up to school and staying at school when I do get here. My GPA dropped my first try senior year which is kind of like the worst trimester it could possibly drop. I'll probably survive last trimester by just continuing what I'm doing, just getting up as late as I can, getting ready in five minutes, um, normally like leaving after fifth block most days. I'm Meg Zalo, I have senioritis. My senioritis started in junior year badly because I was already committed to college for lacrosse, so I just really didn't have any motivation to come. I will cope by having first block off and lacrosse because it motivates me, kind of. Oftentimes when I want to leave school, I just have my mom dismiss me so a boot doesn't chase me down. We try to encourage kids to go to class, go to class, go to class. I mean, I have a doctor's appointment. Parents, teachers, and college counselors have long been conducting research in order to understand these behaviors, but have yet to find a cure. Making it to graduation is our only hope. Finish strong, you know. Uh, you guys are you're in your last trimester here. You want to leave a, a positive legacy uh, behind here at Winnicott High School. So, um, you know, fin finish strong and uh, make, make people proud of you. That seems pretty accurate to me. Wow, that's crazy because I'm not even a senior and I can already relate. 
Well, that about wraps it up for us, Winnie Cunnit. I hope you have a great weekend. And have an excellent but safe Cinco de Mayo. C-sharp or c natural.